Welcome back to part two of MVC web application development using Visual Studio 2012. We left off the last time with our connection string. Uh, what I'm going to do in this connection string is make it a little bit more specific to our application. And I'm going to call our database web application data. We're just going to make it really simple here, some, something with, uh, without a lot of complicated information in the name. Um, to do that, we just alter the initial catalog and uh, the attached DB file. Okay, so we have our initial catalog right here and then attached DB file right there. Once we've done that, we're going to save that and then run our application again. Okay. Now that we've changed that, because we've changed our database name, uh, it's not going to know where the other database is that we created before. So when we go to register a user, it's not going to find that old database and it's going to assume that it has to create a new one uh, using Entity Framework migrations. Now, once we are uh, on this register screen, sometimes it takes a little bit of time to load up because there's a few things to load in the background. Once they're loaded, though, it, uh, your page will start to load much faster. Okay, we're here on our registration screen, so we just do, I'm gonna type test user, and I'm gonna use test user as my password and test user as my confirm password. Really quickly, we will, Register that. I'm going to save this information for later use so I don't have to uh, put it in all the time as well. Now, you'll see that we're logged in here. Okay, I'm going to log off that user and then just close our web page because we don't need it open now and then stop debugging. Now, if I go back into our app data, you'll now see that we have that file created. Now, in between the breaks, I had deleted the other database, just so you know, it's, uh, that's why it's not there anymore. Uh, yours may still be there. If it is still there, you can feel free to delete it. Okay, now there's a few other things that we have to do to get started here. We need to uh, upgrade to Entity Framework 6. And... Where are we here? There we are. New get packages. You're going to go to manage new get packages. Now new get has a variety of features available to it, uh, namely uh, a quick download of, uh, of uh, uh, installable features for your website. So we're going to install entity framework 6.1.2. We just accept all, all the way through that. Now, while it's installing, there's going to be a few other things that we're going to uh, have to upgrade in the process. And what we're going to notice when we run some of the features of, um, of this newly upgraded site is that uh, we have to um, address that some of the options that are available to uh, older versions are not available to uh, version 6.1.2. Uh, so we have to uh, do a few more upgrades to get ourselves to up to speed. So we will uh, as well upgrade to ASP.NET um, 5.0. Okay, in this case it's version 5.2.2. So we're going to upgrade that as well. And fortunately, the errors, if you receive some errors as you're, uh, you're loading up, you're going to notice that um, it's, it's not difficult to source down the errors or source, source through the errors um, because you can usually uh, do a search for the error code and find the information you're looking for. 
Okay, so right now it says, Pre please save and reload the project or close and reopen the solution to complete the upgrade process. So we'll just press OK. Close that. All right, and then we're going to load up our application one more time. Okay. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and run this here. Now there's a few other installs that we will need to do, but I'm going to wait until I uh, see the uh, errors pop up. And here we have one of them. <coughs> okay. Um, let's do a, a quick search here to find out what the error is actually asking us for. Attempt to uh, attempt by security transparent method. Well, let's just see what this is here. And I believe this is we have to install helpers. Yes. Um, so we're going to install ASP.NET Web Helpers. And it's just one more thing we'll, we'll install, and that should get us to where we need to go. Now, for this one, we're going to use the package manager console. And I'm going to just paste in the information that we uh, collected from that website. I'll just push return and that'll go ahead and install the update here. Now once we have that updated, um, our web should, site should be up, to, up and running and ready to go. Just to allow it to update the uh, web config. In fact, I'm just going to close that right now just so that it doesn't ask me again. All right, let's try running our uh, website again. We'll see what happens. Okay, we've got just a couple other issues here. And we'll work our way through these things as we go. Again, this is intentional here. We want to make sure that um, I'm going real time. And here again, it's got a, a solid answer here. I've tested these before, so I do know that this is uh, a big part of the problem. Um, so we're going to install one more package. Okay. All right, and let's just quickly read through what this says. Uh, if you have a prior version of the package installed, you may need to remap the that version number to the version 3.0 with the following code in the project config file in order to avoid breaking packages with dependencies. So why don't we go ahead and just take a look in our web config and make sure that we've got everything that we need. So if we look down through here, we may see something. Uh, in fact, we are looking for webmatrix.data. And it looks like we have the right ones installed. I am going to comment this one out because we're not using that one anymore. And let's go ahead and try to rerun our program. Okay, well, let's cross our fingers this time. I think it's going to work. But nevertheless, don't get frustrated when this stuff happens. Um, it happens all the time. You have to um, bring your project up to current levels before you get started. And that's very common. So try to get used to that. All right, let's see if we can log in our user. 
If we can log in, then we can move to part three. Okay, now I've saved this information from before, so I'm just going to go ahead and click on log in. And we are available right here. We are logged in and uh, we're ready to go. Okay, let's shut that down. Shut those down. Stop debugging. And we're going to move into part three. Thanks for watching.